Yes, yes, yes. This is Oku T Boxing. And I'm somewhere out of London. I'm not going to say where. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm privileged to be in the home of Don Charles. I, I'll have to, I have to interrupt you and <laughs> yeah. say you actually, because in my whole entire time yes. doing this boxing, uh, in the boxing industry, yes. you're, yeah, not probably, you are the first person yeah. I've allowed into my home to, and also I have to tell the audience, your viewing audience, yes. what time is it right now? Um, well, Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. I'm here yes. on the way back from work. Yes. <laughs> you called me saying that you'd like to. I said, T, let's do it tomorrow because it's late. Yes. I live I live out of London. Yeah. And you said, Uncle, I work all the time, so I'll come. So I have to feel privileged that you've taken the time to come 9 p.m. to come and talk to me. I don't know what you want to talk to me about. Yeah. Obviously, boxing related. Yes. <laughs> but you've come to talk to me. And... It's probably the first time, am I right, that this is my other half, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. How right? you doing? And <laughs> I've never allowed her anywhere near any cameras or any interviews. She's not allowed, but being yes. as you're at our yes. home, yes. it'll be rude of me yes. not to introduce. Yes. Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've um, you just coming back because your son just finished sparring mm -hmm. with me, um, George. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that um, this is not George. She, Jackie's not George's mom. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, so where did you guys meet and how long have you guys been together? I'll let her answer that. Okay, um, Jackie? Okay. Well, he'll tell a different story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the true story um, is I was coming back from a photo shoot one day mm -hmm. um, and coming out of a tube station, I could hear the footsteps uh, behind how me. How embarrassing. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Turn around, there's a big black man running <laughs> straight after me. And, and what, then, did I say, what did I say to you? The first thing you said to me was, I can make you stop smoking. There you go. I was smoking a cigarette at the time. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah. He <sighs> said, yeah, I've got a gym. Come down, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, kind of just started from there. How long was this? Six years ago. Mm -hmm. Six years ago. Mm -hmm. Just over six years. Yeah. Genuinely, yeah. genuinely, I saw this young lady. It was it summer period. It was, yeah. Yeah. And I thought, what's a beautiful girl like her? Smoke. Smoking. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care how beautiful you are. Smoking is ugly, in my opinion. So I made a comment. Mm -hmm. um, that's really bad for you. It's actually how I started. I said that's really. Does that bad mean for you. that you wouldn't have spoken to me if I wasn't smoking? Probably not. Really? Yeah, yeah. Probably not. It's just one of those things. Timing. I'm. I'm glad I did. Jesus, yeah. just six years later. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. Obviously, I did. Sometimes yeah. you say something. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. She was smoking. And I. I saw this beautiful woman smoking. I said. That's bad for you. She goes, is it? I said, yes, it is. I said, I can actually make you stop smoking. I can help you to stop smoking because I've done it several times to clients who has to, male and female clients who has to train. Um, <coughs> they were smoking when they met me and now they're non-smokers. And have you smoked since, how many months did it take you since when we got together? For you to yeah, stop not smoking? long after. Yeah. Stop smoking. Living proof. After. Yeah. That's Was, the effect I have on people. How long were you smoking prior to that? Um, about 24 years. 24 yeah. years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How and do you uh, feel for not smoking? Yeah, though? brilliant. Do you get the it's urge different. sometimes? I still dream that I'm smoking sometimes. I dream yeah. sometimes I wake up with a fright because I think I'm smoking and I've dropped my cigarette in bed. <laughs> oh, wow. Weird. Yeah. I think when you're a smoker, you're always a smoker, yeah. but yeah. I wouldn't touch another one again. She's yeah. kind of changing her way though, because this one time we went to, um, we went to eat and, um, Nigerian food, mm -hmm. which is quite meat based, and mm -hmm. you didn't, you didn't touch, you asked for no meat. Um, exactly, and yeah. the way, same way I encouraged her. Yeah. I didn't force her. I encouraged her to stop smoking. She's also encouraged me to eat better. Yeah. I was raised on meat. I'm African. I was raised on eating meat, yeah. chicken, lamb, and stuff. And she's made me aware of why it should be better if I didn't continue to and. We've, we haven't eaten meat for how long now? Uh, it's been more than a couple of years, I think. Yeah, hasn't we it? haven't touched meat. We eat yeah. fish, but we don't eat meat. Jackie, what's your reason for not eating meat? Is it because mm, of... Me personally, I, yeah. I think it's... Um, I'm not comfortable with the way that the animals are farmed. Okay. Um, I think if, if I lived somewhere where I knew I could get sustainable, you know, meat that was farmed responsibly, I probably, I probably would eat meat. Mm -hmm. But because I don't trust it and I don't trust the hormones they give them and, 
it's i don't think the animals are very healthy and not very happy and i don't think that can make for very good healthy meat mm. but um yeah and apart from that it's just not it's not very easy to digest and mm. yeah just do better without it don't we mm -hmm. You said um, you met her coming from a photo shoot. So, mm -hmm. um, what was, what's the sort of line business? Is that what you do for work, or yeah, you know, I'm you... I'd, I'm a curve model and do some acting and background work. A as curve well. model. Yeah, model oh. for larger ladies. Okay, yeah. voluptuous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ladies, yes, with yeah, those ones with the nice shape. You see, absolutely. Like Listen, <laughs> I'm an African yeah. man, right? You know, I'm not into skinniness. Yes, and um part of the attraction is the curves it's all about the curves yeah. and you know so therefore uh what you see in any person and the opposite sex you see face you see figure yes before you get to know that person then you you, you fall in love with everything the mind the, the soul the body and stuff but what you see first is visual we're all visual aren't yeah. we yeah so yeah, yeah. You, just, you just remind me of um, when um and joshua had that little um minor issue with Amir Khan with mm -hmm. his wife he came I was like well you're not my type of I'm all about the BVW <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what it? does big, that stand for I don't big know. body women or something okay, like that I'm, I'm, something, not, I'm yeah. not up to date yeah. as you know I'm an old school so <laughs> yeah. those abbreviations yeah. and terminologies yeah. were uh, but I'm, I'm sure I'm, I know what he's referring to yeah. yeah so reason why I'm here this weekend one of your um Xboxer mm -hmm. so you often called your son um mm -hmm. Yes, I, mm. I spoke to you a couple of days before that off camera, mm -hmm. and you told me it all depends on Derek how the fight was going to go. Absolutely, absolutely. If he's switched on, if he's switched on, um, as much as you like David Price, the the the, the fight won't go more than four rounds, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we witnessed. Absolutely, I mean, because I said. You know, I've witnessed, they've done numerous rounds together. I saw enough within those uh, rounds they did many years ago. Mm -hmm. Going back to 2010, then to, then again in 2012. David Price was our chief sparring partner when we were preparing to fight Vladimir Klitschko. Mm -hmm. The fight that never happened. Um, then a couple of years later, v Vitaly, the older brother, wanted to... Basically, the younger brother chickened out, and that's a fact. And then what you do, the older brother stood in to say to save face, um, opted to fight Derek, and Derek did really tremendously, really well <coughs> back then. So I got to see David Price close up what what he has and what he doesn't have, and I knew I kind of knew how the fight would go. We'd res we we would respect his power. He has a lot of power, David Price, um, but. Der Derek is all wrong for a lot of people. It's certainly wrong for David Price style. Um, in the sparring and everything, for why you gave that prediction, did you? What are the weaknesses you see in David Price? Um, yeah. Because the guy, because I interviewed him and I was looking at the size of him and mm. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, size me, six foot eight. Yeah, you'll be yeah. the first one again. I'm revealing this. To, it's not a secret. Yeah. No one's asked. No one's brought the subject up. Yeah. I will only speak when I'm asked. Okay. And when, when I start speaking, I don't stop speaking. Yeah. I break it down for you. Um, I had the privilege of... Um, David uh, Price had trials with myself with view to me becoming his coach at the period when... Remember when me and Derek first parted? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'd split uh, after the Tyson Fury fight. Not, yeah, after the second Tyson Fury fight, yeah. he opted to go elsewhere to get another coach. So during that period, it was a two-year gap, and uh, I believe the Sourlands were promoting and managing David Price. Yeah. And I got a call from them to say, look, we're thinking of, uh, we've recommended you that David Price comes to see you with view to potentially become his coach to fix any problems that you as a coach would. I said, yeah, I'd love to work with the guy. Um, look at this. He has... He won bronze, right? Yeah, he did. At the Olympics. And if I remember right, on the way to winning that bronze, he actually had beaten the favourite for that, to who was favourite for the gold in that tournament. He'd beaten them in the semis, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then after beating the favourite, you'd assume he'd go and win gold. 
but he ended up with bronze, which is still bronze. Even if he didn't win a medal, the fact that you've qualified to go to the Olympics means you've got something about you. Yes. Yeah, not everyone can do it. Many try and many fail. So that's an achievement on its own going to the Olympics. So I kind of felt privileged when I was told that they wanted him to have trials with myself. And he came down and we did uh, some sessions and I knew what I needed to do for him. And I believe I would have been quite successful. I, I know and I still know what David Price needs. And even up to this point, he's such a nice man that I believe I can fix what's wrong, what I can see. Every, I think everybody can see it, what he needs to put. If we can fix that, he's got every chance in the heavyweight division to, to, because he's reached a certain level. He's won the British, he's won the Commonwealth. Did he win the Europeans? I can't remember if he did. I don't think so, no. No, no, no. no. So he's falling short at European level. So um, I minimum requirements, I can get that guy to win the European title and then who knows what happens demographically, what happens with the, you know, the heavyweight division is always changing. Yeah. yeah, even now, if he came to me, I'll, <coughs> I like the guy a lot, I'll work with him. So I'm putting, I'm hinting here, David, Mr. Price. Yeah, get your ass to London, because I know he's also a family man, mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to leave the family, because when we had the trials, he did want to work with me, mm -hmm. and then he explained to me that it was hard for him to leave his family in Liverpool, yeah. and I said, I said, look, it's your profession, do what you got to do. So then he went and had trials with uh, uh, Dave, Caldwell. Dave Caldwell, and then that was more local for him yeah. to um, to to. But then I'm still putting it out there yeah. to him if he wants to, because I know everybody's saying to him, retire, retire. I'm, no, I said no, provided he's healthy, provided he if he still got ambitions to, he has to have ambition first and foremost. I can't give him that. He has to give that himself. If he's still ambitious enough to go on and, and as an Olympic athlete, as an Olympic bronze medalist, yeah, and look at his attributes, his physical attributes alone, you know? So, so I, I was, that was leading to my question whether you thought he should retire. So judging by that, you don't think he should retire. Um, he has never lost on points. He's lost seven times. Mm -hmm. It's always always, always, getting, stopped, always yeah. getting stopped. Yeah. How could you see yourself rectifying that problem? Yeah. Is it mental or what? Yeah. What do you think yeah. it is? <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 not just mental. It's a collective of different things. I'm not going to sit here yeah. and yeah, advertise what I believe. That's for me to know. It's a personal thing. If he were, he's already been once, and straight away I addressed what was wrong. There's a few things that we need to, he needs to work on, whether it's with me or with another coach. Even if I don't train him, I'll gladly uh, advise him to go and address those areas. With those attributes, physical attributes he has, he'll be a menace, should be a menace, right? So, um, like I said, you know, but if the man chooses to retire, then who am I to convince him? It has to come from him. Should he want to continue? You have to do those things, make those changes, or else the results will never change. Okay, at a certain level. So, um, how did you feel? Did you with um your your son, my first son, in your, boxing. your first son Derek. in boxing? How did you feel seeing uh, I, them? I, I, when uh, what was your feeling when you saw him do what he did? Well, against David Price. Yes. Come on, yeah. that I told you off record prior to what was going to happen. I said, yes. I even told him himself. Because you know he recently had a baby. Oh, yes. His, oh, his missus his, gave birth, yeah, Emily yes. gave birth, uh, uh, birth to their second daughter. Um, and um, which is a blessing, you know. He messaged me to say, my wife has just given birth and I congratulated him and his missus. And, um, and couldn't help it, but said, by the way, in your fight, you know what to do. Do not give him an inch to breathe. Because if he gives David Price time on the ball, it's almost like a, a skillful striker. I always bring football into my interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, I love my <coughs> Tottenham Hotspur, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you give a skillful uh, player time on the ball, they'll punish you. And David Price is the same. I refer to him as that. 
uh, in terms of his attributes if you give him time on the ball he's got enough variety of punches and he'll punish you dearly so although things are not 100 percent with myself and derek on the business front mm -hmm. it's purely business not personal i love him i will always love him because again i've said it numerous times i'll say it again on this camera you know a lot of one thing about me i don't have every man has an ego some people's ego is bigger than other people's and uh, some people don't know how to contend their egos i have an ego i have a big ego right but i know how to contain it i know how to use my ego yeah okay um i've said it privately i've said it publicly i owe him there which is already says i owe him what what do i owe him because without meeting that young man Who's to say that I would have become the known coach that I am today without him? Had I met another fighter and I worked with them in the beginning, because he was my first ever fighter that I worked with, yeah, and he delivered in, 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 with, 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 with uh, interest, yeah? I'm a, I was a very ambitious coach, young, well, I don't know about young, I'm getting on. <laughs> when I met him, when I met him, um, 15 years ago, I met Derek, yeah, in the street, and we worked together. He trusted me back then, he trusted me, and I haven't done anything for him not to trust me. So that's why I'm a little bit, there's no bitterness, I'm a, a bit disappointed is probably the word, yeah? After, you know, if me and you start something, and I've always had your back, I've always had your back through the bad times through the good time. We've had plenty of good times. We also had some setbacks, yeah? So we should win together and lose together. That's my mentality and still is, okay? So don't just be with me on the good times and when the times are bad, then you're looking for a scapegoat or you look, I'm not that scapegoat because of course, if we all mess up, we all messed up together, yeah? If we win, we win together. If we, re if we, when the happy time, we should rejoice together and, 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 and wipe each other's tears when things are so, so good. So basically, I'm always grateful that I met him. No regrets. I'm grateful for the role he's played in my quest, in my journey as a coach. Yeah. I wouldn't, that's, I'm a God fearing man, as you know. Um, that's the way God has it. That's the way my own destiny has it. Um, that's the way I was allowed, permitted to be in his professional boxing career to the, to this point. I didn't want to leave for, for his own personal reasons and for, for misadvice from other people who talk to him and he's listened to them to get rid of someone who's part of his foundation. Yeah. So that I'm very disappointed in. Yeah. But on the other front, like I said, I can't thank him enough for the role that he has played in my professional life for me to, to get where I've got. Um, as far as I'm concerned, God willing, I'm halfway through my journey as a coach. And what I've achieved and learned, so I'm really, really excited about the future. If I've done this and I believe I'm God permitting and gives me strength and gives me life, what am I going to do in the second part? With all this knowledge, I'm still as hungry as I was when I started as to achieve my work uh, ethic, my commitment, my desire to work, my desire, burning desire to work. I've even got more energy than I did when I started. Yeah. And I'm, like I said, I'm very excited of the future because I've got a number of fighters. I'm young fighters. I'm working with and developing. As you know, I don't inherit fighters, with the exception of Fran Bullioni, who recently retired. That's the only ready-made fighter who came to me of his own accord. No promoter gave him to me. He phoned me, said he would like to, to can I give him a trials? And look what me and him when I achieved in a short period of time. Yeah, he retired. He's done very well in boxing, made a lot of money got out without any long-term injuries. He, he, he started to get cut frequently. That's partly the decision collectively, his parents, his dad and himself made, and I supported it and still support it. Yeah, he's got out of boxing intact, 
plenty of money in the bank, got his faculties, everything. Yeah, house is practically paid off. Yeah, and he's still young. He's still only 29. He's not even 30 yet. Yeah, he's got her. And, and guess what? He's got her and he's going to stay out. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really, really... Um, uh, on the really week of, of the fight with Derek, mm -hmm. um, I saw the interview with Anna Wallhouse and he said the beginning of the end between you two mm -hmm. was um, you're not there with him in the in the, um in Monaco. in Monaco. Do you know what? I haven't seen that interview and many people have said to me, let me put my, my version of it. As you know, uh, I'm a Nigerian man. Yes. I live here in England. Yes. Okay, and I've never had a British passport. Yeah? Yes. There's no uh, hidden reason why I've just never applied for a British passport. But I'm in the process because it will make life easier for me to travel. Okay? <coughs> so consequently, when it was time to go to Monaco, normally you apply, you get... I've, I've traveled all, all over Europe, no problem. But that particular period... Nigerian government had problems with the uh, French government at the time. I didn't know this, but I'm not a politician. So when I went to apply for my visa, I applied for it, but they didn't process it on time because there was a political uh, issues going on, which doesn't concern me. So they didn't process my visa on time to go get my visa to go to Monaco. But you're going to hold that against me you knew the reasons. It's not because I didn't want to go to Monaco. I tried everything. Eddie Hearn gave me letters to support my application, everything. And it was touch and go whether I get it or not. I was there at the embassy. I camped out at the embassy trying to get my visa. It's not my fault. They didn't grant my visa. So I couldn't go. I had a team. Yeah? It's not just me. I don't train Derek alone. There was a team who I instructed that Derek knows all about it. Sat everyone down. We had a meeting in London, the whole team, including Derek. I'm not going to be there, but nevertheless, I trust this team who know you. They're not strangers. They're going to guide you, go to Monaco, carry out exactly what we sparred, everything. The training, everything was done as normal because we're, we're experienced. I'm not inexperienced. You, the driver of that vehicle, if this was like Formula One, he is the driver. He has to go to Monaco, get in that ring and execute the game plan. Yeah, this is how bad it is. In Monaco, I said to my son, stay on the phone, George. I will give you instructions accordingly if I'm needed. I was on the phone giving instructions for my son to go. He's not allowed because he's not licensed. He has to go ringside and relay the, the information all throughout that fight, that's what was happening. I was relaying information. Obviously, it's not the way to do it. I should be there. I put my hand up. The trainer should have been there. Yes. So, <clears throat> the fight, you're an experienced fighter. Caballero, it, no disrespect to Mr. Caballero, he wasn't fit enough to tie Derek Chisora's boot laces. Yeah? So, a guy who's not in your league, how the hell would you allow him to just run, run, run? We know how to cut rings off. We have four Vitaly Klitschko, who was brutalizing and knocking everybody out. If you can deal with that, if you can beat Robert Hellenius, we've got more than enough experience to have dealt with that situation, and we didn't. So, as a coach, I was very, very annoyed with, with, the, with that. Yes, I wasn't there. So your coach isn't there. I'll give you an example. When when uh, Tyson Fury went to fight Cunningham, yeah, in America, I believe it was was it Peter Fury, yeah. his uncle, yeah. couldn't make it. I think it was visa issues as well, yes. right? Tyson got dropped in that fight. He was able to get off the canvas and finish the job. Did he come back and sack Peter, or tell Peter I can't because you didn't come to America? No. So that excuse, I'm afraid, is not valid. It's a nonsense. Outrageous. Yeah? Okay? The real excuse, I'll tell you, the real excuse is a man called David Hay. Right? I'm too strong of a character around Derek, and David Hay knows that. 
If you want to control something, what do you do? It's the oldest rule and trick in the world. If you go into a situation and you feel, I want to control the situation, but there's something in my way, what do you do? You remove it. So Derek is foolish to listen to Mr. David Hay to remove the most solid thing in his professional boxing career is me. I will say it to the camera, I'll say it publicly. I've never said this to anyone, right? He was foolish enough to listen to Mr. Hay, who was a fantastic businessman, fantastic strategist, fantastic fighter, but it's a control freak. I'm a senior citizen to Mr. Hay. I will tell it to him in his face. I will tell him, and I'm telling it. You can see my, my tone has changed. Yeah, there's a lot of anger. Yes, there's a lot of anger. How dare you? My 15 years of work, that's my son there. So when he's fighting, you ask me a question, I always divert, I was because I don't just give you a yes or no answer. I'm not a politician. I need to, I don't, I hate being misunderstood. Being as you're taking the opportunity and time to come to my home, I'm going to elaborate on this particular subject. I have never really elaborated. I've been asked about it in the past. I kind of skated around it. So when I'm watching my son in boxing, Derek, that is, my first son, I've got many other sons, but he's my first one. You're an African man, aren't you? Yes, right. Sir. So you'll understand where I'm coming from. Your firstborn, you love all your children, but your firstborn, there's that bond you have with your firstborn. He's my firstborn. So no matter what's happened, it's still my concern. When he's fighting, I don't sleep properly. My my partner, would, she's just <laughs> left the room. She will be, I'm like a wounded animal, because. Emotionally, I'm still attached to the guy. Yeah? And if he saw, he saw remnants of what, patches of what, if Chisora, Derek Chisora, yeah, had started with, I remember some times in the past when I was working with him, sometimes I would look at him, some days, not every day, I will say to him, you know what? If you can do what I'm visualizing, develop him, visualizing you, you'll be untouchable. That style is a horrible style to fight against. Derek Chisora style. Yeah, when Derek brings it, he's unfightable, in my opinion. And I've seen patches of it. Even David Hare, who's promoting him now. Go and listen to his commentary when Derek, when Derek fought Takam. When Derek knocked out Takam. The commentary is there. He said, this is what Don Charles been um, ranting about over the years. Because I've been saying it. Yeah, because I, of course I'm going to, I'm the one who sees, I'm the one who devised and designed <coughs> his, his, his technique. Yeah, when you're, uh, my background is dancing. I, I danced before I boxed. Yeah, the guy who used to uh, in, at the Pineapple Studios in Covent Garden in, in the 70s. The guy who is the choreographer, Charles, coincidentally, his name is Charles, American guy. When I now look at the similarities, coaching is like choreographer. You're a choreographer. Yeah, when you're teaching, I use those methods. It's like dance. Boxing is dance. It's movement. Very, very, very similar. Uh, 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 the connected boxing and boxing is I call it one of the books I'm writing the title is called uh, boxing and the strap line is uh, the violent dance it's a dance but it's a violent dance that's how my understanding about what we're doing it's a dance do you know the uh, art uh, the Brazilian Capoeira mm -hmm. yeah Brazilian Capoeira, it's a dance, but it's a fight. But then there's no contact. So it's so graceful, the way they move, the way they pretend to kick each other, but they don't make no contact, but it's a dance. Yeah, do you know the origins of it, Capoeira? Where is it? Are you gonna tell me it's from Nigeria? Well, yeah, it's from Africa. Wow. When the slaves were taken on the slave ships, being brought over to, to Europe and to various parts of the world, they weren't allowed to fight oh on the ships. God. 
because they'll get in trouble. We're almost done about 30 minutes, so the, the, the thing might go, but carry on. Okay. If stuff, stop the camera again. Okay, when again. the slaves were taken from Africa, yeah, we've um, it's, it stops after 30 minutes, so we have okay. to we do that again. So, okay. yeah, we could go now. Yeah, okay, the slaves, right? Do you know Brazilian Caprera? No, no, the origins of it, yeah. right? Basically, it's from Africa when the slaves were taken from Africa onto the ships, the slave ships, they weren't allowed to obviously fight. It's almost like being in prison. If you fight in prison, you're going to get punished further. Yeah. So they weren't allowed to physically fight each other. So they devised a system of how to keep fit and have uh, uh, fun. So they, they devised the art of Caprera. That's, it's, it, it ended up in, in, in Brazil, but it's an African slaves who were taken, like I said, on the ships. So they came up with the thing of fighting without no contact, so they couldn't wouldn't get in trouble with their uh, uh, their captors. Captors. So that's where the origins of Caprera. Um, so I can relate that to that of boxing. Boxing is a is a dance, but it's a violent dance, you know. So when I coach, I use the methods of uh, choreography, of how a choreographer, <coughs> a dance choreographer, would do set pieces, and then you have your freestyle stuff. So the style that Derek was given, uh, there's been various parts of his career where I thought, if this kid's carrying on developing, he'll be untouchable. But unfortunately, we never reached that where we were able to, he was able to okay. learn that, all the bits that go with that dance. Yeah? That routine. Part of the improvements I've seen with... Um, um... Derek Chisora is um is conditioning, mm -hmm. but um on Saturday he was um it was like joint career heaviest because mm -hmm. when Derek normally don't fight mm -hmm. well it's because sometimes it's Way too heavy issues. yeah um but this was a joint heaviest he's ever fought. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is that he performed the way he did? Is it because he, this time, instead of fat, it was more muscle, or what, what do you think? The uh, let's is? rewind to what you just started. Uh, you said his second heaviest in his career. Joint. Joint, joint. joint right. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something now. Derek Chisora's conditioning, with the exception of when I've been working with him, with the exception of probably four, four occasions, mm -hmm. he's had 41 fights now. Yeah, that was the 41st fight on Saturday, just gone, right? Right, during the times he, he, he uh, was with me, he's been in the ring probably four times where he shouldn't have been in the ring. The weight was just not acceptable, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. What David Hay has done, I've witnessed it myself when I was for the preparation for the Dylan White uh, fight, yeah? The second Dylan White fight. We all know David Hayes a body beautiful. He's very vain. He's very into how he appears, which is a good way to be. Yeah, he respects himself. He's, he's he cares about how he appears uh, 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 in the public and uh, right. So when he started working with Derek, yeah, he brought. I even said to David, "Hey, you know what? This is what he needs because attention. A lot of attention was paid to." what Derek puts in his mouth, yeah? And he took care of that. There was a, a, a chef that was commissioned by David Hay 24-7 uh, for what Derek puts in his mouth. So the new shape you've seen is more definition, muscle definition. It's carrying a lot more muscle, which weighs a lot, yeah? Which comes to the <coughs> second part of, the, uh, of what you said uh, just now. Uh, muscle mass, muscle weighs a lot, yeah, more than fat. So you're seeing a better sh shape looking Derek because they're paying a lot of attention to the physique, the eating and the, the, the weight training. There's a lot of emphasis now put on the weight training rather than the actual, right? So um, I'm not a massive fan of, of, of the weights. It depends, uh, weights have to be used, but they have to be used correctly, yeah? not just for the physical looks, right? So consequently, he will come in 
it could still do the weights and still if it's done properly and it, remember david hay the same as when i was training derek advising him i'm not an expert in nutrition we have to employ a specific nutritionist to work with the athlete but when the athlete is given something to eat, it's up to the athlete to be disciplined and not stray from it so if derek's coming in heavy yeah he used to do it when i was with him i'm not a hypocrite he would have strayed, I guarantee you, he would have strayed from the diet he's been given. Yeah? Hence why you will see that I was quite concerned when I saw the weight, what he weighed in that. Yeah? So that that would be Derek straying from 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 um, what, what the program he's been given in terms of the dietary, uh, the right diets he, he was given to, to eat. I'm not going to sit here and say to you, oh, um, I'm... I'm pointing at everything i don't i don't lie i'm a big old man i don't never have lied and i don't lie. i don't butter things up i say it how it is yeah so you would find the excess weight he was carrying david wouldn't have been happy with that i promise you that and what he Dave, derek would have done he would have strayed like he has in the past when it comes to that it's called cheating yeah which is quite could be detrimental to your performance yeah so if you had gone into a long fight then you would have seen a the negative effect of that yeah and for him to have beat him price he would have had to done what done jumped on him which was instructions i'm sure from david when i spoke to him on the phone prior to the fight that was instructions do not hang about with this guy jump on his ass and you'll get the result as much as i love david price but derek is my first son in boxing yeah. he's been calling out um alexander usik mm -hmm. how do you see that fight if they do fight yeah I'm, this is gonna sound outrageous we're gonna say oh you're being biased what what are you talking about let me tell you something the worst thing Usyk could do in his second attempt a second fight as a heavyweight is get anywhere in the ring with Derek Chisora right he'll get knocked out Derek will knock him out you might say what are you talking about yeah Derek knows that you've heard Derek he said stop juggling balls yeah not just with Derek, with any of the top guys there, he you said cannot beat them. I would say the top ten, it, they've made him top ten, haven't they? You said in some of the uh, oh, yes, governing yeah, bodies, yeah. Whatever. Okay, because he got straight to number one in WB. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure time, because yeah. of his uh, previous achievements. I'm not disregarding his previous achievements, but I'm not convinced. I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually not a fan. You might say, what are you talking about? It's my opinion. Doesn't mean I'm right. I've seen what I've seen. Put him in there. Put him in there with Takam. Why didn't Takam fight him? He got injured. Right. Why didn't uh, um, Why didn't uh, Sprung Sprung uh, Tyron Sprung? Why didn't Why didn't he fight him? Because they found some substance. In found there. what? Well, he had three tests, and um, two of them was filled, and the last one wasn't. But it doesn't matter. Fake two tests at first. No, he's clear. From my understanding, Tyrone Sprung was clear, yeah? What you what you find in this boxing thing, people who want to fight you, they'll send messengers to see how you're doing in the gym. If you're performing well and that, they'll be tipped off, do not fight that fight. That's my take on that one. Because based on what he showed on that night against Chess Witherspoon, yeah? Tyrone Sprung... <coughs> It's a known. I know about Tyron Sprung. He would have got his ass knocked out. As in, Yusek would have got his ass knocked out. Wow. Yeah. So, can fool the audience. I got a more tuned eye. You can't fool me. I'm old. I'm old school. I see everything. I don't miss nothing. I'm still willing to learn more. I don't know everything, but I'm still willing to learn more. But you can't fool me. I'm not convinced. Uh, go and be a credible heavyweight, one of the top tens. Then I, then I, I'll be first to take my hat off to him and say, yeah. I could see him becoming a world champion. That's your opinion. Um, if for example, if Joshua wins his next fight, he's yeah. probably gonna vacate one of the belts. He probably fight for a bigger title against, against who though? The, if they want you to I, win, if they want you to win. The WBO mm -hmm. belt, mm -hmm. they'll find a suitable opponent for him. No, but that opponent has to be eligible. Well, I don't know the WBO rankings, mm -hmm. but I'm sure 
right now. I know what you're saying. Yeah, which is that right, right. if they, uh, you said if they want you to, yeah, they'll find you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm not disregarding that, but I'm saying if we're being serious yeah. and he's being serious, want to be a legitimate, yeah, you got to win it. Yeah. I'm not saying he can't win it. If he's engineered, if they've engineered it for him to win, yes, of course he can, but then he's going to have to defend it, right? A few times. Yeah? No, I don't believe in today's current <laughs> market. There's too many, there's people coming through that you and I, you know them. I know people who are coming through. Boxing is, boxing, there's no more pretending in boxing. Boxing, there's a lot of good fight in everywhere categories. Yeah, the internet is the internet is a wonderful thing. You know what? People are very clued up now. People are very educated now. People are not just relying on what they're being coached. They're seeing things and they're picking up things, good habits, and they're practicing them. That's what I'm noticing. With people are developing at a rapid, rapid uh, rate at the moment. Yeah, things aren't what they used to, where information wasn't easily gotten, and that people <coughs> are seeing, people are traveling, people are people are seeing things. People, you know, you go on the internet, people. People are watching things. People are learning. They're they're practicing themselves. So it's not just what their coach is teaching them, yeah. So there's a lot of boxing. I've never known it like this. What if he fights? Um, because um, Joseph Parker's manager has come and said they would like to reschedule a fight with Derek for like mm -hmm. around February times. Mm -hmm. Would you advise with Derek to take that fight against Joseph Parker? Where Derek is at the moment, yeah. Yes. He's experienced enough. He's good enough, and. As much as I knock, uh, when I say knock, it's because it's personal. Me and David, hey, yeah, it's me. Well, this guy, leave me alone. No, it's personal. You, sh you drew the first blood, yeah? Don't, don't, you shouldn't have tampered with me. I'm too uh, much of a good human being and a good man. You shouldn't have done what you've done. And the way you've done it, bang out of order. And it's an ongoing feud with, I have, he probably doesn't have any problem with me. I've got a problem with him, right? But he's doing a lot of good for Derek. Do you understand? Know what I'm saying? Understand? way it's personal with me and david hey my opinion but he's doing a good job for derek david hey is i sent david hey a message a long ass message once yeah my son george who's just turned pro said to me dad that's who i want to model myself on not because of his fighting style his business head the way he's managed to reinvent himself time and time until he couldn't reinvent himself anymore now he's gonna do it for Derek. In, you know, you know, in music, the artists that have long life, longevity, they're the ones who are able to recreate, reinvent themselves. And David Hay has that, that ability, and I respect that and I salute that. There's a lot of positives that comes with David Hay. I encouraged <coughs> Derek when Derek told me initially he was he was thinking. Of, I thought it was a crazy idea initially. Then when I digested it, I encouraged him. I said, you know what? It would be fantastic if David agrees to do this job for you. But little did I know that what I helped to commission is what's going to push me on the side. Yeah? And he, that's going to come back and bite you on the ass, Mr. Hay. That decision. I promise you, it'll come back and bite you on both cheeks of your ass. That's fair enough. It must be a weird feeling, like, to have a dislike for someone at the same time you know they're doing a good job yeah uh, but, you could, but you could, i don't know if you, i'm making myself clear if you can understand where i'm coming from yeah. yeah okay he's doing a good job for my boy but that thing will not be long sustained because you've removed the foundation of it okay yeah yes you removed it didn't it didn't have removed me to to get his claws all over Derek, yeah? It's called exploitation, and I'm not one for that, yeah? And I will, whether I'm with Derek or not, I've always got his back, he knows that, yeah, he knows that. I don't wanna work with Derek anymore, because twice it's happened now, is uh, you can't, I'm not that girlfriend that you can pick up and dump whenever you want, no, I'm better than that. I'm an African man for that matter, a senior African, he's African, they should know that. Yeah, you don't do that. I don't. I'm, I'm better than that. So you talk about your son. Is he fighting soon? George? Yeah, George has a date. In fact, he had. A, he's supposed to have fought <coughs> three weeks ago, but yeah. Dorian Darch, as you know, yeah. he was a pencil in fight, and Dorian unfortunately couldn't. Uh, Twenty four hour notice to cancel after having seven weeks notice to prepare for for, which is very unprofessional. But I understand that he had some personal uh, reasons, which are whatever it is. I hope he sorts it out. And uh, we've got another date, two dates. Sam, as you know, Sam's working wonders at the moment. He got uh, Sam Jones. He got uh, 
George's final on the 9th of uh, uh, November and on the 14th on, on, of uh, December on the MTK, oh, wow. uh, you know, sure. the Golden Conquer, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah. appearing on, the, they're featuring them on, as a, as a, 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 a featured fighter on, on, the, on those. Um, There's always nights who have a heavyweight future in these um, sort yeah. of cards. And trust me, not because he's my son. Yes. He's one for the future. You say it's Sham Jones, so they share, they share um, sh uh, the stable, same stable as um, Joe Joyce. Yeah. Does Sham Jones get them to spar or anything? Oh God, George, him and Joe, obviously they've become stable mates. Yeah. Adam Bruce trains Joe, as you know. Yes. I train my son. Yeah. So Sam Jones is the, S Jam is the connection. Yeah. So consequently, George uh, does a lot of, and George is learning a lot. I mean. Again, you're looking with a guy, George Joyce, who's, in my opinion, he won the gold, he got robbed of it in Rio, and got given silver, but he won that, he beat, is it Yoko, uh, Tony, Tony Yoko, Yoko. Tony he, Yoko. Beat, he beat, he beat Tony Yoko in that, in that final, and he got robbed and given the, 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 the silver, and to be sharing a ring on, the, on a regular basis, that's only going to stand George in good stead to learn, because you know George didn't have any, he had terrible amateur in fact, he had 15 fights as an amateur, that's all, yeah, mm -hmm. and based on that, to what he's showing <laughs> me as a professional, but he was always going to be, his style has always been a professional style, yeah. hence why he didn't win many fights as an amateur, because yeah, he's catching and blocking, and they must be scoring the, the shots that are, are, are landing, that's what, it's no surprise he's doing well as a pro, because as an amateur, that wasn't his style, he's not into fighting a, hundred, a frantic pace, 100 miles an hour, uh, not much landing and scoring here. We don't score. I don't score shots that land here. I score shots that land cleanly, and so anyway, it'd be interesting. Monitor his uh, his uh, progress, his progress yes, I and I believe you won't be disappointed. And he he is different. He's he's different. You just said something that I just highlighted in my brain. Um, so you say Joe Joyce with Adam Wolf and you with your son. Mm -hmm. So you guys must. Uh, see each other quite often yeah you know, like yeah because we both have heavyweights yeah. who quality sparring is about it's not just sparring; it's quality sparring and obviously they like what they're getting from george and we like what we're getting from them you know so it, it's a two-way thing you know have you ever shared your dislike to david hay to adam booth no that's no. That, david hay uh adam booth is, is, is very pri he's like me he's very private yeah he's very private i wouldn't dare it wouldn't be right of me to go there and discuss my business. He doesn't ask me about my business, so I'm not gonna go there. We're professional. We go there purely for my son to spar Joe, and we're getting, George is gaining mm -hmm. so much experience from, that he didn't get from the amateurs, from, from with, with the exercise of, of uh, going there regularly. <coughs> Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois, Mm -hmm. and his team they mm -hmm. seem to be one in that fight mm -hmm. what do you say to that i did an interview last week in fact on that same subject and i say it again um as good as i think um young man donald dubois is keep him away from such characters like joe joyce joe joyce is a seasoned top tough professional heavyweight Look what he's doing. Look at his resume. Look at his what he's doing. Yeah? Look what he's doing currently in the very... For someone... How many fights has Joe had now? Ten? So about ten. Or right? Or yeah. Okay. Look what he's achieved in that space of time. Look what he does to people that he's fought. Names. He has fought names. In fact, he made his debut against a, a boxer that I trained, Ian Lewison. Yes. Yeah? And when... I can confess. It's a confession. When they uh, opted, it elected and selected, whatever word you want to use, to fight Ian Lewis <coughs> in his debut, yeah? A renowned puncher, a guy who I'll put my house on it that he was going to win that fight. In fact, me and Sam had a cheeky bet because I thought, this guy's a drunk, yeah? And David also knows Ian Lewis and knows him really, really well, yeah? And how dare you? I thought to, I said to you, you know what? These people know something we don't know. 
How can you risk your prized asset? David had just signed him on, a, I believe, on a promotional basis, yeah? And then you're going to risk it, his debut against a renowned puncher. You know what? I have to, again, salute because they pulled it off. And I said it. I said, if, if you guys pull this off, that's a genius stroke. And guess what? They pulled it. And from then on, Joe's gone on from strength to strength. He's knocked her used enough, yeah, in good fashion. Stavern, okay, Stavern is an, you know, Wilder has already sort of uh, exploited him, and but he was still a dangerous, an ex-WBC world champion. And the way Joe disposed of him, he didn't just go out there and knock him out, he technically was dissecting him and then took him out. And, um, you know, no, he's doing really, really well. I, I don't believe that they should put Daniel Dubois, there's no rush, stay away from Joe Joyce, in my opinion, that ma young man is what, 21 years old, mm -hmm. yeah, he still hasn't, he might be muscular uh, uh, size, he hasn't got his man's strength yet, there's a lot of difference, people will not understand, there's a lot of difference, the body you've got from weights is not the same body as a man who's a fully grown man, he's in his prime Joe Joyce, he's in his prime, yeah, and he's a tough, tough guy. It looks, it doesn't look pretty to the eye, Joe Joyce. I've seen him firsthand, how he works. It doesn't look pretty to the eye to watch, but it's very, very effective. He reminds me of George Foreman. Joe Joyce, he reminds me of George Foreman when he used to brutalize people, sheer force, sheer, sheer natural strength. That's what Joe reminds me of. And so they should, good name, it suits him. That's why they should keep that young man away from him, yeah? Whatever happened with Ian Lewis? I mean, there's obviously there's other levels of people still making money, like the Dave Allen and you know like David Price. I mean, at that sort of level, I mean, there's, there's love, there's still a lot of money on the table yeah. to be to, right. to to enjoy you. Right. What's going on with him? It's quite simple. Any boxer that I've worked with, and I work with, the same love, the same care, the same advice. I said to him, after the fight with Joe Joyce, I went to the hospital to see him. Yeah? The man I saw lying on that hospital bed with a broken eye socket, broken jaw, broken ankle. He broke his ankle in the second round, by the way. People, this has not been publicly said. So during the fight, we weren't aware. He wasn't aware. He knew he had great pain. This is how tough Ian Lewis is. He was fit. He couldn't do the things I wanted him to do, and I didn't understand why. Yeah. After the fight, he couldn't walk. Went to hospital. X-ray, broken ankle, broken uh, uh, jaw, broken eye socket. The man I went to visit, uh, they wouldn't let me see him the night of the fight. I went next day to see him. I sat by his bedside. His eyes was closed. And the man I saw, and I said to him. I cried, I said, no more, you ain't doing this anymore. Also, he's, he's his own worst enemy. His weight is a handicap, yeah? Again, he's not disciplined. What a fighter, but he's not disciplined in terms of being an athlete. There's more to it, there's more to it than fighting, yeah? He can fight, yes he can. He hits harder than anyone I've probably trained but he's not disciplined in his approach to doing his profession. So I told him, no <coughs> more. I don't want to see you like this again, ever. You have a family, you have children to bring, bring up. I don't, want, I don't want to be any part of it. So I gave him that advice, excuse me. I gave him that advice and, um, sorry, it's George, one second. You could pick up, we could uh, wrap it up and... Um... Hey, son. Um, yeah, can I call you? But I'm just with um, T doing, doing something. Doing some... You're right, George, how you doing? You're right. Good, good. I heard uh, you're fighting soon at the MTK show. Yeah, yeah, fighting couple, not long, man, not long. Okay, you, how, how's training been? Yeah, it's all good, man. Just, just gonna, just gonna be in spot, trying to spot, get spot again this week. Okay. Yeah, just getting ready, man. I feel good. So, not, yeah, not that, not that I'm trying to set you up or anything. I've got the camera rolling. Yeah. Um, but I heard uh, Joe Joyce has been giving you some good work. Yeah, some good rounds. 
Jones. <laughs> yeah, it's good training, man. It's good to be around someone experienced. And obviously, we have the same management and stuff. So, yeah, yeah man, it's just it's, it's good to have that company. And, uh, and obviously, if you can mix with people like that as much as possible in training, then eventually when you get to that level in, 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 the, in the real thing, then I can only help you, you know what I'm saying? So, it's all good, man. So, I, I look forward to seeing you. I will be there. And um, Don... Um, I'm going to leave you to speak to your son and we could cut this um, conversation and we'll mm -hmm. we speak a little bit more and then mm -hmm. um, this is Uncle T signing up. Thank you, sir. Can I shake your hand? My pleasure. Thank you, always. Thank always. you. Very You're much. welcome to my home anytime. George, I'll call you back, yeah? Uncle T signing up. Yeah.